Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to discover with you whether or not good things can come in small packages. I'm here talking about the Rokinon Samyang 21mm f1.4 um, lens for mirrorless bodies, including uh, this Canon EF, EFM mount, along with a Fuji X mount, a, a Sony E mount, and then also it's available in Micro Four Thirds mount. And so we're going to take a look together at the image quality to see if this little lens is a worthy investment when it comes to its image quality. So let's jump in and look at a variety of images together and come to some conclusions. One drawback to this lens that is kind of part and parcel of its design is that it doesn't have any kind of electronic coupling uh, to the uh, camera body itself. And so what that means um, to our, our study here is that it doesn't transmit any EXIF data to the camera body, which means we're going to have to kind of go off my memory as to the aperture values that were used. So let's jump in first with a out-of-camera JPEG of some tulips sitting on the kitchen table. And, and so overall you can see here at wide open, and I was pretty close to minimum focus here. This is obviously a very pleasing result, a nice uh, defocused area, and then a nice amount of detail here on our main subject. And uh, you will note that although there's a narrow depth of field here, so there's good detail there in the various textures of the tulip, but we will see just a little bit of purple fringing here in this very high contrast area between very light and very dark. Um, and there is, at wide open aperture, there is a little bit of chromatic aberration, but as you can see in the rest of the image, it's not uh, strongly pronounced. In the second image, I wanted to just kind of shoot kind of a common household object here. And so these are my daughter's headphones. And, and so you can see once again that um, at close to minimum focus, now before I could focus down on this as well, and I have another shot where I'm focused in on the actual plug, which really throws the rest of the kitchen um, more out of focus. But here I wanted to shoot at a little less extreme. And so we could see um, pretty nice detail here. I mean, not a shocking amount of resolution on uh, this particular shot but overall the look of the image is very uh, pleasing um, nice soft out of focus area here so this is going to be at f1.4 but before we do that let's take a quick look for comparison at the Canon uh, 22 millimeter f2 STM lens and and so we're going to see here that number one there's a pretty huge difference in the size of the bokeh highlights um, compared here and on the Canon itself we see that it is sharp but not amazingly sharp here on the subject wide open but the chromatic aberration is really well controlled here no uh, fringing showing up and as I look at the highlights themselves overall not bad the one thing is there is you can definitely see a pronounced inner line and what that will means is that um, there can be a little bit harder edges sometimes in your transition on out of focus objects because rather than kind of just smoothly falling off there is a, a inner line that will create a little bit of busyness. Now if we jump back now to the uh, Rokinon 21 millimeter. First, let's look at our subject and overall I think you can agree there is a little bit more sharpness. We'll jump back and forth here and see that there's a little bit more sharpness and contrast from the uh, 21 millimeter lens. And if you look here, the difference between the, the lettering, white lettering on the back, black background, you can see it's just a, it's less pronounced here with the Canon compared to the Rokinon. So the Canon 22 millimeter F2 is already a very sharp lens. And so it shows you how much resolution is involved here um, in this lens. So it's very impressive wide open. Now, on top of that, we're going to see also it's doing a good job controlling chrom chromatic aberration here. Now, as we look up at the bokeh circles themselves, um, number one, there's definitely a lot of activity inside the circle. Um, you might call this onion bokeh or concentric circles. And so um, that is definitely you know, something where you have, when you have highlights in the frame, some of you may be turned off by that. Some of you actually like that effect, I know from your feedback. So anyway, um, overall across the frame, we're gonna go to the very edge. We see that really this lens isn't doing a terrible job. We get we have some kind of lemon shapes here towards the edge of the frame, but they're not as squeezed as what I've seen. And um, even over here, this is still a fairly circular shape wide open. So a pretty good job there. There is, as you can see over here, there is some of that inner line that is showing up. So I'm, I'm not crazy about seeing that. Okay, so the second shot is going to be at around F1.8. And so we can see here already there's, I mean, you, 
your detail and information here is it's pretty close to perfect already and so great resolution um, overall here are bokeh circle shapes they're kind of smoother across the overall edges of the frame overall but we're seeing still of course a lot of busyness inside and you can see that uh, inner line that is showing up here now it should be around f2 and uh, we see once again you know great detail here um, overall up in this area we see that there is kind of that kind of three-dimensional i've on the canon f1 uh, f1.0 um, 50 millimeter lens i call this death star bokeh and that's a little bit uh, of what we're seeing there um, you can start to see a little bit of the aperture blade shape this has a nine bladed aperture and so it will do a good job even when stopped down Okay, awesome resolution. This is f2.8, and, and so we can see here, um, you know, you can see that inner line. Now, as the bokeh circles become smaller, the busyness becomes a little less apparent. Stopping on down, this should be at f4. Um, we see here, we're starting to get a little bit of a light bleed, which is not too uncommon. Um, and the aperture blades are there, but overall, it mostly looks like circles from a distance, and so that's a positive. And then finally, at f5.6, um, you know, it becomes too small to really tell a whole lot, other than you can definitely say that it's, it's doing a good job of keeping a circular shape, even when stopped down. So that's certainly a big positive there. Now, some more kind of real-world type images. This is a, a, a wide open of the, uh, the family cat. And so, number one, it shows you the perspective down low. And, uh, but also, you can see that great resolution. A lot of texture information on uh, his muzzle. And so, that's definitely a positive. If I recall correctly, this was either shot wide open or no more than f2. And, and so it shows, and if you take this out into a landscape type setting, that really that's a great amount of information there, a good uh, color rendition, and a nice um, detail um, in the uh, little textures of the forest there. Also wide open here, and I wanted to shoot more of a close focus image here. I really like the overall look of the image here. We have a nice transition both before the plane of focus, toward, from defocus towards focus, and then of course beyond the plane of focus. And um, if we look down here at the actual details here, we've got a lot of, um, a lot of information there. And, uh, and so a lot of uh, texture being resolved even wide open. And so overall, that's producing a very nice looking image. I wanted to uh, stop down to uh, t test a couple of things. Number one, to uh, look at the Sun Star, and uh, this is this is very nice compared to the f or the the 12 millimeter f2 lens that I owned. It uh, shows it, the nine bladed apertures produce a much nicer Sun Star here. That's actually very pleasing. I also wanted to uh, look at its flare resistance, and I see one little uh, stray bit of uh, light here, a ghost effect here. But overall, across the frame, um, it, it's really looking quite good, and contrast is holding up uh, very well. I did note, uh, at first I thought that the the actual uh, flare control wasn't as good. I had an ND filter in place, um, which is, is very helpful when shooting a wide aperture lens out in a setting like this where snow is reflecting really, really brightly. But um, it did do note that that ND filter definitely was, it was creating a lot of the flare effect. So I, I re recognized that, I pulled it off, and I saw a pretty great result here um, with the bare lens. Uh, here's another on another day. This is overcast, but um, at I think around f2.8, this was shot at. And so just a really pleasing looking image, nice overall contrast in the, the details here. And, and textures are uh, nicely rendered here. It's a very nice little landscape lens. Here is wide open, just to kind of show throwing a scene out of focus in a, a real world setting. And so if we look at our plane of focus, which is quite narrow, overall the detail is, is pretty good. I, I would guess there may be a little bit of motion blur in this image, um, but overall the, the appearance of the image is, is quite good. I was, I was cross country skiing and so probably um, I was breathing heavily and I introduced that to motion blur into it. But overall the look of the image is nice. Here's another image that I just thought was cool, just the, the variety of textures here. And so I think I stopped down to around f2.8 for this. And so you can, and that looks about right when I look at the amount of defocus on the trees beyond. But obviously there's a lot of uh, information here and even at a pixel level, you can see all of these textures. There's, there's a good rendering of all that information there and uh, handling 
Up here we see just a hint of a chromatic aberration on this branch here. Just a tiny bit of green fringing beyond, but because the subject itself is green, um, I would say overall that that's not a terrible performance in the Boca region. So overall, this is uh, looking quite good to me. This image is, uh, I was up against the maximum um, shutter limits of the, the camera shooting the scene wide open at f1.4, and so it, it suffers a little bit in the detail um, from kind of being a blown out type scene, but I, I, as I convert it to black and white, I really actually liked the overall look, kind of a, a hazy, softer look of the image itself, and so um, this doesn't triumph in the details, uh, lots of snow falling at while I was shooting this and so that obscures some of the texture detail but overall um, as we look at the actual area of focus it's still a, a decent amount of detail there but overall a, a cool looking image. Here's using that ND filter once again in this kind of setting. I really find that it helps to introduce um, a lot of contrast at wide apertures. And this is shot at a uh, wide aperture here. And so um, the resolution doesn't blow your mind, but yet there's a, lot of, there's a lot of information there and a nice looking image overall. Uh, here is another, I kind of shot this on the fly, I noticed the uh, snowmobiles approaching and so I stopped the lens down to I think around f5.6 for the shot and so I didn't have to worry about focus at all and so you see obviously a great amount of um, information here, great texture detail and contrast there and overall it handled this um, you know fairly diverse scene quite well. I did pull open the shadows just a little bit to reveal a little bit more of that information but overall I'm very pleased with the look. This again is just to show you, uh, you know, this lens definitely triumphs with uh, some nice color and uh, texture information. Again, this is a fairly wide aperture on this shot, I think around f2, and it does quite a nice job overall. This image is actually an HDR image. It was a handheld HDR, and it's obviously received some post-processing. But I did want to give you a look at what um, I was able to accomplish with the lens um, using it in a setting. And so obviously some really beautiful uh, color here, and, and some of that is post-processing. But, you know, you've got to start with great image to begin with. And so I just wanted to show you this more to show you uh, kind of globally what the, the lens can accomplish combined with some post-processing. And so as you can see, this little uh, lens packs a pretty serious punch when it comes to its optical performance. In my final review that will come next week, I'll detail what some of the shortcomings and challenges of using a lens like this can be. But at the same time, you can see that it is a very worthy lens optically. Also of some interest to you, it may be that these same optics are available in a body that is set up directly for cinematography and uh, and so as a result, it's a pretty compelling option that I'm considering with mounting with like a Sony A6300 or something like that in the future. And so, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I've got some linkage down below and also give you a chance to look at some image galleries and also um, a linkage to purchasing the lens if you're interested in it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.